Is this thing on? Man, f this camera, bro. Hey, what's going on there, guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene, and today we're gonna be talking about the best tip about cooling your tent down that I could possibly give you. But first, show some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you miss out on any future videos. And also be sure to join us on Patreon for giveaways, tips, one-on-ones, early access, live streams, and a lot of other cool stuff. Link is gonna be below and at the pinned message at the bottom. This is a topic I've had a lot of questions about on Discord. I mean on Discord especially. So we're gonna talk about temps, we're gonna talk about humidity, where you gotta be at, and most importantly, how to cool your tent down so you can stay as close to the optimal range to grow some hella dank. So as far as the temps and humidity go, I've mentioned it in a few videos, but you wanna stay in the 70 degree range. I don't care if it's 70 degrees, I don't care if it's 79 degrees. We can nitpick about this all day long, but the point is just stay in the 70s throughout the plant's life. That's all I'm gonna tell you. We're keeping it simple now, right? As far as humidity, this one changes a little bit depending on what stage your ladies are on, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna keep it simple. If they're seedlings, keep it over 65%. I like it between 70 to 80% personally, but if you're at 65%, that's kind of like the lower tier that you wanna be at. If you got some young vegging plants, keep it between 55 and 65%, and for mid-veg all the way up throughout flower, I like it between 45% and 55%. Also, before I forget, all you punk rockers and pop punk music fans, check out our music channel, Punk Scene. Be sure to subscribe and watch our first music video. We haven't come out with a video in a while, but that's definitely gonna be changing. We're gonna be uploading a lot more music content on there. The link is gonna be at the pin message at the bottom and also in the description below along with everything else. So as your plants get older, they rely less on water retention, which is why you're slowly dropping the humidity up until the mid vegetative stage. Now, water retention is important when they're young. Now, what about when it's super straight out balls to the face hot out like it is this past summer and your tent is, let's just say, 80 to 95 degrees. Of course you got CO2, but for those that don't believe in CO2 for whatever the heck reason, I have a trick for you and it's pretty easy. What the heck? The camera just straight up died on me, bruh. So like I was saying, now assuming the room that you're in is pretty cool, which I mean, I can imagine that it would be. I mean, who's not trying to keep their homes nice and comfy this summer, right? So this is what you wanna do. Take a box fan and stick it on the outside of your tent where the bottom vents are gonna be, I mean, they're literally like on every single tent that's ever been made since mankind. All right, that was a little ridiculous, right? <laughs> Make sure the box fan is facing the tent and that's gonna start blowing a lot cooler air into your tent. It's also a good idea to leave your exhaust system on because as cooler air is coming in from the bottom of your tent, the exhaust system is gonna be pulling that old, hot, stagnant trash air out. So you're always gonna have, you're always gonna have a constant cycle going. Take full advantage of your exhaust system. It's not only for eliminating the dang stank. I know, groundbreaking, isn't it? Trust me, guys, for the longest time, I could not figure out for the life of me how to cool down my tent. And I also want to remind you that having an AC in your room isn't going to cut it. Like, just because it's cool in your room doesn't mean your tent is automatically going to be cooler. You need, you know what I mean? You need a catalyst. You need something to be drawing that cooler air into your tent. So that's why you got to have a box fan pulling that cold air and sending it into your tent because without the box fan, you're gonna end up just trying to figure out a way so you don't have to leave your tent open every time that you have a hot day. So trust me guys, the box fan trick is gonna knock down a few degrees. And if you guys already know about the box fan trick, then obviously this video is useless unless you just wanted to watch the video for just, just for the sake of it, you know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, this absolutely works. So even on my current run, I had the AC blowing and it was from the other room. So I had to have an oscillating fan blowing air into the studio and I also have, I don't know if you guys could see way kind of back over there. That's where we have our box fan. And even though it's on the side over here and we have this door kind of open, it's still gonna be sucking that air in. Now, as soon as I put in that box fan, all of a sudden I went from having my tent 85 to 95 degrees, dropping to like around 75 degrees. You know how I said I like to keep it in the 70s. So as soon as I put in that box fan, it was just cool enough. I mean, 75 degrees is perfect as long as you're in the 70 degree range. And I know, I get it guys, all right? I know 
know some of you guys are gonna think that this tip just sounds so simple, but trust me, if it was that simple, I wouldn't have so many people complaining about their tents being super hot, so try out that box fan trick. I feel like a lot of people don't really know enough about the box fan trick. I see so many people with a million fans inside their tent, but it's not gonna do you one bit of good because you need a catalyst. You need something that's gonna be pulling that air in so that way you can utilize all those fans inside your tent to kind of maintain that temperature. Now, of course, this is only gonna work if the room your tent is in actually has cool air. I mean, if you have no AC, you know, you're SOL, straight up. So remember guys, just having an AC unit in your room isn't gonna fix everything. You need that catalyst. Now, of course, if you have an AC unit in your room, expect your humidity to drop, and if you're below the range that you wanna be at, like let's just say you're at 30%, just for the sake of argument, right? Make sure to invest in a humidifier with a sensor. Don't get one of those cheap $20 humidifiers at Walmart. They're trash, trash, bruh. You're gonna end up just playing guessing games, and that's not what you want. You wanna lock your environment in, right? So make sure to get a warmish humidifier with a sensor. Sensor being the key word here. The one that I'm using is a Toppin, but for some reason, after I bought mine, like literally the next week, they're just unavailable. So I don't know, you can't get the one that I have. So just go on Amazon, find one that's a warm mist and has a sensor. You're gonna maybe spend like 80 to $100, but I'm telling you, it's a worthwhile investment. Listen guys, if you can create the perfect environmental condition for like maybe a hundred bucks, wouldn't you want to do it? Like, wouldn't that be the way to go? But of course, I'm already assuming that you already have the humidifier. Most of you guys already have a humidifier with a sensor. I'm just saying a lot of beginners, they get the humidifier that's like super cheap, spend 20 bucks at Walmart and then feel sorry that, you know, they spent their money on something that doesn't even work. So that's why I'm kind of making this video for you guys, especially you newer beginners out there. I want to be able to educate you and tell you what you should be doing and shouldn't be doing so you don't make the same mistakes that I made. The is really important to have that's how you're going to be able to lock in whatever humidity percentage you want to be at like let's just say for me even though mine works really hard because i still got the ac unit going and i have low humidity as it is because i have that sensor it's always going to maintain whatever percentage i want it at like literally right now it's at 50 percent it's going to stay at 50 percent and if it drops it's gonna pretty much just kick on that humidifier for whenever you need it. And having a sensor is really good because that way you're not constantly, the humidifier is not constantly working and blowing out water vapor. So that way you don't have to fill up the reservoir every like hour or so. All right, so as a recap, cool down your room and take a box fan, stick it on the outside of your tent, facing your tent where the bottom vent holes are. One box fan should be enough to get the job done. I never really was in a position where I had to use two. I always just used one and just kind of got the job done. Now, I've seen people trying to use ducting to push air into the tent and you know, you pretty much have an in and out. So in theory, it sounds like it's a good idea, but if you're already ducting both your ins and outs and it's just not working, scrap that idea all together and get yourself a box fan and no I'm not sponsored by any box fan companies I know people like to think that I'm paid off whenever I mention something that actually works in a video guys trust me I'm not being bought off by anybody now before we do finish the video I do want to make this one point known some of you guys might think this is a super easy tip so simple why would I make a video on it but trust me it's an effective tip and it's gonna help you guys achieve a solid environment for your ladies and that's the most important thing and I've never made a video about this little box fan tip so I figured you know what why not talk about it here all right so I'm gonna close off today's video but before I close off today's video I want to thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on patreon I really appreciate the love and support. So I'm gonna close out today's video. Be sure to drop a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe for more content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, stay safe. Peace.